Merry Christmas, Mario. He's got a lot of games. He's got the mainline games, the spin-off games. He's even got movies now. Excluding a couple oddballs, he's got a solid track record for quality experiences, which make deciding on the best game in the franchise a challenge. Now, I know that deciding the best game is pretty much impossible, which is why I'm gonna break it down into three different categories. And then from that, we'll figure out which game is the best. The first category, moveset. Now this doesn't make sense for games such as Mario Kart, so for this ranking, it will be based on the 3D mainline games exclusively. Plus, I believe they are better than any spin-off anyway. So, what do I mean by moveset? How the game is made for Mario to explore it, and the tools given for him to do that. For this, there are two main competitors, Mario Odyssey and Super Mario Sunshine. Odyssey has Cappy, meaning that nearly all creatures in the game can be utilised for travel, which allows Mario to use their moveset as well as his own in which he has the most extreme movement that can be accomplished out of any title. There are sequence breaking jumps that can be accomplished without glitches, which Mario 64 has, but not due to the moveset but rather due to the lack of prevention of them. As well as this, it's possible to beat a lot of areas without changing it into the captures, which adds to the user experience by allowing them to figure out how to do a certain section. Sunshine however has Flood, a water backpack which allows him to hover temporarily in the air, accelerate at incredible speeds, reach astronomical heights in seconds, as well as being able to shoot enemies from far away. As well as this, Mario can infinitely dive using the water to reach maximum speeds casually. Together, this makes exploring the terrain really fun to do, and adds to the unique feeling of the game. Except, it isn't. Mario Odyssey has this ability in the Seaside Kingdom, with these creatures. They have the same abilities as Flood, if not better, therefore this round goes to Super Mario Odyssey for its moveset. The next category, the world. By this, I mean where Mario can go and how he gets there. Now, Mario games are known for their hub worlds. Peach's castle where the levels are paintings, Telfino Plaza where the levels are either graffiti or pipes, the Galaxy games with the Comet Observatory being the fan favourite for its size and features. However, one game beats all others. That game is Bowser's Fury. That's not a Mario game! If you don't know what this is, then fair enough, because it's not its own game. It was a mode of the recent version of Super Mario 3D World, where Bowser Jr. needs Mario's help to get his dad from this to this. This game is its own game, make no mistake, and the reason it wins is due to not having a hub world. This is because the entire world is accessible without menus or levels. You ride Plessy, the replacement dino for Yoshi, across the lake and you can go anywhere once that area has its ink removed. Travelling to areas is extremely free to do and allows the world to feel connected. And by having Bowser occasionally attack the player, it makes the world not just feel like levels in one location, but also shelter and defence from Bowser. This game wins this category without a doubt. The third and final category, Goal. By this, I mean what the player is required to collect, how they collect it, and the purpose of it. This is not the same as ranking the story, as for Mario games, I don't believe that it's really a contributing factor. He just wahoos and yippies, that's all that's required. Each 3D game has some sort of item to collect. There is the star, the shine sprite, the stars again, moons, and cat shines. The best collectible is completely up for debate. They all have a similar design, so it's really just preference which one is the best. But I want to rank how each of them work. In Mario 64, stars can be obtained by beating levels, collecting 100 coins, special events such as the slide, and Toad giving them to you. They work really well, except the 100 coin stars are annoying to get, especially on harder levels, and by that, I mean Rainbow Ride. Oh no! Sunshine sprites work in the same way, except worse with the addition of blue coins, which can be traded in for sprites. So far, stars were a better mechanic compared to the sprites. Galaxy. They are at their best in the star form due to the hidden stars in some galaxies and stars that can be found from finding Luigi. This swap from 100 coins, now just being a 1-up, made each star feel more unique, with 100 coin stars now being a special comet event. These were an improvement from the first two games, but they are still painful to do. Galaxy 2 has a different story, where after the game is beaten, each level now has green stars to collect, and by collecting 240 stars, you unlock the final level. I did this, and I haven't been the same since. Odyssey's moons and change of level design means that they are more commonly found, with over 20 moons available in each kingdom at their first visit. 
This makes them feel less rewarding to find, but means that the level design gets to have random paths and puzzles to give the player different methods to achieve the reward. There are races, puzzles, plants. They get really wacky. Except at the end of the game where they become infinitely available to buy and defeat the purpose of getting them at all. This made most of the post-game moons feel pointless, which loses nearly half of the moons worth to the player. What I've said so far sounds mostly negative, and I am mostly complaining to show the problems, just so the final game can be seen in a better light. Bowser's Fury has the best collectible in any Mario game due to one major change. Levels changing in real time. You get the sprite from one location, and now the next level hasn't appeared yet, so you can go onto a different island to get more sprites, meaning that after getting that sprite you can go back to where you were previously, and the next sprite is available to collect. There isn't any major waiting, and due to the lowest number of collectibles needed for 100% completion, at 100, no sprite feels annoying to find as you only need to spend 20 minutes max in one area. This means that Bowser's Fury wins the category, and overall is truly the best Mario game. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and feel free to let me know any of your own opinions and any major things that I may have missed. This will be the final video of the version 2 series on my channel of analysis videos, with next year um, I'll be doing more long form videos, which will be version 3. Thanks for watching, it really means a lot. Brofist.